96.5 CTG, the original 70 soundtrack. I'm Alan Barnes, and on the phone with me from Australia, I have Mr. Graham Goebel, principal architect and songwriter from the magnificent Little River Band. Yeah, very good, uh, Alan. Great to talk to you. This is a 70s show. Can you um, walk our listeners through a little bit about the uh, formation of the Little River Band, how it came to be? We formed in 1975, and in well, the, the initial, the idea to put it together happened in London, and Beeb Bertels uh, and Derek Polici, the drummer, and myself were in London with a band called Mississippi, and while we were there, we met Glenn Shorrock, who was also in England, uh, and uh, met Glenn Wheatley, our manager, who was also in England, and we decided to come back to Australia and, and then attempt to be the first Australian band to break America from Australia. And we formed LRB back in Melbourne uh, with all of us by, by, by February 75. So it's a long way there. When, when that broke in the States, I think it was top 30. Did you guys, uh, had you guys already toured over here, or, or was that pretty much uh, was your uh, passport over? No, th- that was the passport over. Um, the long way there was a song that we used to play in Mississippi, and it was one of the songs, or was the opening track, actually, of our first album. So when we all got together, we had 60 or so songs to choose from, and one of them was It's a Long Way There, this was to record, and it's a long way there was one of them. And then when we um, finally got our deal with Capitol Records um, in America, um, they chose to cut down It's a Long Way There, edit it down to a single, so it could be issued as a single, because it was an eight minute 30 song, right. which was great, great for FM record back, uh, <laughs> FM radio back sure. in the day. But, but, but uh, so we had the double thing where we had a nice, FM track plus they edited it down for a single. Then suddenly it all caught on and on the strength of that we were able to come to America and start to start to support people and start to tour. And I think that, that uh, pretty quickly your touring schedule became pretty heavy duty. Yeah, we, we were pretty much touring all the time other than in the studio recording. Probably half or three quarters of the year it would be on the road, yeah. Where, I, guess, I, so I presume you're writing songs on the road? I was, yeah. I, I, that's what I used to used to do. I often would come back off tour with about 30, 30 new songs ready for the next record, and it, I'd only get three on it, but I, I, I always had a, a, lot, a lot of songs. Even, even to this day, I've got probably 100 songs that I've never recorded. When you did you study harmony uh, formally, or uh, was it just something that was sort of just a natural byproduct of writing your way through the songs when it came arrangement time, or did you actually write the harmonies uh, along with the song? Yeah, no, um, never done any study. I can't read music. It's all what I hear in my head, and I was able to, from a very young age, uh, be able to hear everything in my head, and and with the. LRB harmonies and all the harmonies that I'm doing these days with my work, which has got even a lot more complicated, I just um, can hear it. And in LRB days, I would just sing the parts to the other guys and they would just learn them like that because we couldn't read music. What does it feel like, uh, I mean, the first time you hit the top ten, I guess, are you on the road and and you find out that by a, a manager you know, like rolling down the tour bus with Bill Borden in his hand saying, hey, guys, guys, you know, we're number six or what? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the, the second single, Helps On Its Way, sort of really broke us. It went to 14. Hang on, help is on its way. I'll be there as fast as I can. Hang on, tiny voice did say, somewhere deep inside the inner man. And then Happy Anniversary followed up, and that went to 16. Happy Anniversary, baby, got you on my... Happy anniversary, baby. Got you on my mind. But then the fourth single, Reminiscing, went to number three, and that was the big deal. Like that, that was when we really started. Uh, during sort of just before that, we started headlining a lot of shows that we were still supporting. But as soon as Reminiscing went to number three, we were then headlining all the time. That was in 1978. Friday night, it was late, I was walking you home, we got down to the gate, I was dreaming of the night, would it turn out right? 
a bit of excitement um, a couple of weeks ago that Katie Lang has just recorded Reminiscing. I saw that. I saw that. Did, now, yeah. when... and I, and I, I went to see her perform and I met her backstage and yeah, it's a wonderful thing because that's, it's starting to get into the wider market now. She's done a great re rendition of it, so I'm really, really pleased with the way. Uh, Reminiscing is the most played Australian song on American radio. Well, well it was, um, our manager had a map and the airplay and where things were. We would play, we'd, we'd be playing 13 shows a fortnight. Every night we'd play and often two on two on Saturdays and then we'd take, take one Sunday off a fortnight. And so we would go anywhere to get on a bill to be in front of people in those early days. You know, whether it be a heavy metal band or a country band, it doesn't matter. We would just go, one night we'd be supporting Poco or something and then the next night we'd be supporting Black Sabbath or something. And, and we did <laughs> wow. that. We did that. And, and, uh, and then... But that's how we broke America, because wherever we were weak, we would go and play. And we were such a tight and great live band that we were impressive to enough people to get them to go and buy our records. That, that heavy touring schedule, did that sort of sow the seeds for some personnel changes, though, sort of in that same time period as well? or It's a very difficult lifestyle, because you're living together 24 hours a day. There's all sorts of personality problems. You're missing your family. Um... You're tired, you know, most of the time right. you get four, maybe maybe five hours sleep a night if you're lucky. So it was a very um, emotionally and physically demanding exercise. Right. And and there were, there were some people that couldn't handle it and left. Some people got fired. And it was just um, what it was. It was very difficult, but very enjoyable um, on, on another level. I mean, it was the show each night that sort of, made it worthwhile, the sacrifices that we were making. Uh, was it satisfying to you as a songwriter and sort of as the uh, impresario behind the band to, to still know that Little River Band continued to have success, um, even with different people coming and going, even after Glenn leaving? Um, that sort of validated your, your whole, I, I hate to say master plan, but certainly the formula that you had for the band. Yeah, well, I, I mean, when John Farnham came in, and by that time, we had when we had David Hirschfelder on keyboards and Stephen Prestwich on drums, who, who sadly died this year of a brain tumour. But uh, that was just such an awesome band, um, and it was, I guess, a big uh, disappointment that we didn't quite get the support from the record company. And so that band never. Um, See, so we really thought we could get up to Flipwood Mac and the Eagles' a level of touring with that band because it was just such a great band but and we had the songs too you know uh, right. but it just didn't have sort of didn't have support at um at the record company level and therefore at radio so it just you know the time with the time had passed and i wasn't interested in going on with the band without a recording contract because to me being a songwriter with no possible recording deal i just didn't want to go and play the hits and memories circuit for the rest of my life it wasn't what i was interested in and i had so many other songs to release right so that's why i decided to leave and i actually formed another band called um broken voices in the meantime do you, do you like the diy aspect the do-it-yourself uh, uh and and the self-publishing possibilities that are out with the modern technology now uh... um well i i think it, it's nice to have the, all of the control of it but it, the market is so polluted with so much stuff that, it, that it's just impossible to get enough access. And in my particular case, uh, because we uh, lost the name of Little River Band, the trademark, right. um, the, the Little River Band fans in America and around the world don't really know that I'm recording because I have no way of letting them know well, there's not sure. a little river band site that, that gives gives a link to my site it would be great if all the people that loved little river band would come over to my site and have a look at what i've been doing because i know that they would love the songs sure. but uh, they, they don't because they don't know i exist and compounding the problem for you know the distribution has gotten easy but uh, the market uh, has just turned upside down and then people just sort of feel like hey you know you, music is not something i'm willing to pay for anymore so, well, yeah, and I find that, I find that extraordinary. Um, but you're right, and and the and the buying public don't have enough time to go and sort through millions of acts and that sort sure. of thing. So I guess what what I've come to is in this day and age, 
all I can really do is um, write and record my songs the way I want to hear them and release them on my internet, on my web. What I really need was the people hitting LRB, well, I be site to know that I exist and, uh, and that I can't achieve that. that. That's my problem. If you're just joining us, 965 CTG, the original 70 soundtrack, Alan Barnes of Graham Goble, principal architect of the Little River Band, on the line with us from Australia. His website is www.gramgobel.com, and I'll spell Graham Goble for you. It's G R A E H A M G O B L E dot com. One of the new CDs that came out uh, just a few years ago was The Days Ahead, which had a video that I really liked called Someone's Taken Our History. When I did the album The Days Ahead, um, it was around about the time where B. Glenn and I got together in, I think it was 2002, and we wanted to call ourselves the original Little River Band. Right. And when um, Stephen Housden, who owns the trademark, uh, heard about that, he instigated court action and we lost that court hearing and ended up not being able to refer to Little River Band or use the trademark uh, LRB or or Little River Band in any form at all. So when, when we went to, we got our American management, he suggested that why don't you try and write a song about how it feels to have your identity taken from you. And I wrote someone's, uh, it was originally called Someone's Stolen Our History. I changed it to Taken Our History, trying to avoid any further litigation from <laughs> Steve House and right. co. It, again, it was very head-on. Uh, we've had uh, uh, several people on here, including uh, Mark Farner from uh, Grand Funk Railroad. I don't know if you, his story is very similar to yours. Yes. Um, in that uh, uh, the other two guys uh, have cease and desist uh, type things, and he basically has to, uh, if he tries to book a live a live date, he has to uh, basically throw some sort of uh, legal document in with it that won't allow the promoter to even refer to uh, Grand Funk Railroad at all in the marketing. We might finish my story to say that we never got to America because when the promoters found that without, without uh, being able to use the Little River Band marquee name, that, that, that they were too nervous to try and promote us. In our, in our case, the, the, the touring Little River Band have no original members. It's a complete cover band. Sure. A complete cover, complete cover band, but people are not um, uh, aware of it, and they still go and they tour, and uh, it's, it's bizarre. But Let It Rain, I think, uh, uh, it's, it's so different to me. Um, it's so expansive, and it's, it's, I don't, it's moody, and it's dramatic, and it's unexpected, and it's 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 killer but i mean it, to me it, it sounds very there's maybe one or two tracks on there that i think well yeah that sounds like a little river band but I, I, that's a good thing to me okay well, well what happened um let it rain uh, it's really it all cu- culminates in the initiation suite at the end of the song at the end of the album in 1998 i went through a divorce after 24 years of marriage i had quite a difficult divorce my wife just walked out one day and it was unexpected i had been over the last 20 years or more doing all sorts of study in in very a variety of different spiritual areas and um, and mainly got to study the works of rudolf steiner i I started studied a lot of his works on on religion on health on architecture on medicine coincided with me starting to write the initiation suite and starting to write out of what I had been studying and learning over the last 20 years. So I came up with the idea of of writing an album that could that could become possibly a movie, could become a stage show, could be it was a concept it was a concept album. Sure. And it's about it's about personal growth and it's about um, you know the 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 life life journey, the human experience all, all on the way and then brought it all at the end to this um, piece called Initiation Suite. That's what I did. And my next album will go back to um, tr- more traditional songs. Right. Um, but, uh, but it will take a little bit from that as well, from Let It Rain as well. And in terms of your songs, um, how, how would you like those to be remembered, uh, you know, if you were to sum up your work uh, up till this point? When I pass over... Um, I'll be remembered as the guy that wrote Reminiscing and maybe Lady. Um, but there's really been so much more to my writing than just those two songs. They were the most 
successful songs I've had to date. Sure. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully I may live to see the major artists uh, look at my catalogue and start recording some stuff because there's some awesome songs there that, that could and should be exposed by some of the great artists of today. Well, Mr. Goble, I thank you so much for coming on our show and just let everybody know that uh, you're still out there, you're still writing just, just magnificent songs, and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Alan. It's my pleasure to talk to you. All right, you have a good day, sir. Thank you. All right, ta-ta.